Hi everyone, welcome back to Dr. Han's Pharmacy Classroom and today we are going to look at how stuff or extracts from seaweed could potentially help fight the coronavirus. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. If you are old, thank you for coming back to support the channel. In this channel, I like to share videos on course reviews, health and science information updates. I also share learning tips and tricks for students' academic and professional development. If these are your interest topic, please subscribe to the channel. This channel needs your support to grow. So in the past week, I've run into a very interesting uh, article that is published in a journal called Cell Discovery. In this journal, they were saying there's a compound from seaweed that could actually help fight coronavirus. Now, I eat seaweed a lot and a lot of Asian uh, people eat a lot of seaweed and that really sparked my interest into looking into this uh, article and I would like to take this chance to share what they're finding with you guys see what you think about this particular compound now without further talking let's go to the slide hi guys like I said in the opening here today we're looking at a very interesting article looking at how a extract or compound from seaweed can add as a decoy for SARS-CoV-2 this particular topic actually sparked a, a lot of interest in me so I went into it and read about it so I hope I can share some information with you all now, first of all, I'd like to make a disclaimer. Now, this video or this presentation is my interpretation of publicly available scientific information, okay? This video does not serve as any intention to give any advice on treatment, diagnosis, and preventions of any diseases. And if I mention any company or products in my videos, I have no tie and no commercial tie with them, okay? So uh, what is in the seaweed that is so interesting? Actually, there are two types of sulfate polysaccharides, or you can think of it as branched launching of uh, sugars, okay? Now, these uh, special sugar have two names. Uh, one is LPI-27 and the other one is LPI-28. Now, their common name is called fucoidin. Fucoidin actually is right now being sold as a supplement uh, in a bottle, okay? You could potentially find it on supplement store shelves, okay? Now, this special um, sugar actually uh, can be extracted from a uh, special type of uh, seaweed. Uh, the scientific name for this seaweed is called Saccharania japonica or commonly known as the sea kelp and I have one here right in my home. Okay. So what uh, did this experiment do? Actually, they extracted these two compounds and also using heparin. Okay, heparin is a commonly used uh, drug or injectable drug for treating uh, prevent of blood clots. Okay, so they look at these three compounds and many other uh, sugar compounds actually to bind to the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And they find out the uh, LPI-27 having the highest uh, molecular weight or the heaviest, the biggest, actually can bind the best, okay, to the S protein itself. And uh, in terms of the structure of the sugar, uh, having more branches actually makes them uh, binds better. And that's why LPI-28 binds better than heparin, which is a single chain long sugar compared to the LPI-28. Now, after they find out how the sugar binds to S protein, they want to look at the effect of the binding. Right, so they do some cell experiments using monkey kidney cells, okay, that is engineered to express ACE2 in uh, receptors. Now it shows that these sugar have no toxicity on those cells itself, and the tighter these sugar bind to the S protein, the higher the antiviral effect. Now interestingly, in this cell type experiment, this LPI-27 compound or sugar actually showed a better antiviral activity than the uh, emergency used uh, antiviral drug Remdesivir. Okay, this is being approved uh, for emergency use of severe COVID cases, which is also a drug that is used for treating Ebola um, diseases. 
Okay, so how did this this LPI uh, 27 actually work? So I have a very simple animation here showing uh, how it acts as uh, in this uh, cell experiment. All right, so you have uh, ACE2 receptors, and normally it will be bind by the receptor binding protein of the spike um, of the spike protein receptor binding domain. Now, if you treat it with this LPI 27. What happens is that you will see the RPI 27 will complete the binding to the receptor binding domain and leaving it not able to bind to the ACE2 receptors on the cell. In another word, it means this RPI 27 acts as a decoy, okay? A decoy so that uh, to, you know, to lure the L BD to bind to it. So what are the potential implications for this Fucoidin? Now Fucoidin is generally safe because it is being marketed as a supplement currently. Now unfortunately, this experiment is really a very basic cell type experiment that happened in a petri dish, closely monitored, and you need a lot more studies. First of all, you need to study in human epithelial cell, which are the major cell types the coronavirus is attacking and also move on to animal study and hopefully in a future they could test in human patients with the COVID-19 all right so what are the tickle message for uh, this particular paper now branched sulfate launching sugar from seaweed actually according to them show a very good antiviral activity in animal cell experiment actually you only they only require about nine times less the concentration compared to the Ebola drug to show the equal antiviral uh, ability so-called the EC50 okay now of course it needs a lot more studies in human cells and as well as in actual patients now the one of the potential implications or application for this compound is that unlike heparin uh, which is a injectable drug uh, this compound can be delivered orally or potentially even in a nasal sprays now if in the future this uh, compound can be developed into a drug or a variant of this compound being into a, make into a drug, uh, there are easy way to deliver this drug compared to doing an injection. All right, to learn more, here is the link for the article itself. I will also put the link in the description box down below so that you can evaluate them. So what is my afterthought about this article? So I think it will take a very long time for a compound of isolated from seaweed being able to use as a drug. You know, drug development usually takes a very, very long time. But I think the potential for this uh, Fucoidin polysaccharide could be used as a binding element in some type of a small sensor setup. Actually, it binds super well, bind to the receptor binding domain. It could be very easily make into a uh, diagnostic too. That's how I feel about it. Well, why I think about it, that's also my topic of research. So I, I research mostly on diagnostic uh, tools using different type of a binding elements. So it actually sparked my imaginations uh, for my own research. All right, so that is all for this week. So I hope you learned something new and find it as interesting as I am. And uh, I will see you again next week for another episode of COVID-19 Update. Well, um, have a nice week ahead of you. Bye.